Just a little while ago, you enumerated how things have changed and grown in a relatively short period of time. Let's go out another, let's say, five to ten years. What do you see happening based upon what you know now? Well, you can use your water <laughs> cup there and look at that and look at the tea leaves there. The tourism industry, what would you like or hope to see happen? Uh, you know, I, 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 I honestly believe in con and we, we will continue to see this grow and expand. We're going to continue to see, um, you know, our, our tourism product uh, not only refine itself, but, uh, but grow and become more vibrant in, in what they're offering. I, I really do see that. I see Erie as uh, more and more is becoming recognized as a um, vacation choice. Uh, of choice by by visitors uh, coming right. you know coming here um, the, the change of seasons we have is is in many instances and is welcomed except this last spring where we had no spring <laughs> but then again it didn't didn't happen really throughout the Midwest all the way over to the mm -hmm. Northeast it was not uh, too good about that at all Summertime, you discussed, uh, but does it also thrive fall, winter, and then spring too? Is there is there an upbeat to that? Yes, I mean our biggest, you know, and always will be our our you know most popular season will be summer. Mm -hmm. um, but the biggest growth that we've experienced in tourism has been in the time period other than summer. It's fall, winter, spring, where we're attracting more people to come in. Um, you know, winter. Uh, Splash Lagoon and, and, and what the Scott family has done up there has totally changed the face of our tourism in winter. We're attracting, you know, they're, they're attracting upwards of what I think 300,000 people a year just going to Splash Lagoon and many of them coming in in the winter coming to a destination that they never would have considered coming to but they're not spending all their time just at Splash Lagoon. Right. They're shopping, they're, they're dining, they're looking for other attractions, they're, they're partaking in some of our cultural activities, the Playhouse, the Philharmonic, and other activities. So we're really seeing that. We're also trying to grow the fall and the spring and make that, you know, we're promoting fall tours. Canadian shopping is huge and we continue to promote heavily in Canada to entice Canadians mm. to come down here um, because that's the growth area and where we really want to have the economic impact is if we can grow the business in the fall and the spring and the winter suddenly what were summertime jobs now are full-time mm -hmm. employment and we're keeping people on longer in employment and you know we're seeing when you look at employment numbers where we might peak out near 15,000 employees in the summer but when you look into the winter numbers in January and February uh, there's 12,000 people that are still working in the hospitality and, and entertainment industry here in Erie County. So we're starting to see this is year round. We're starting to generate jobs that are year round and that's where the real impact comes to the community uh, in terms of the value of tourism. And I know that um, one of the local colleges, Mercyhurst, has courses in hospitality and uh, Penn State I think does the same thing too and you know I mean this this is a business you know this is what people can make a living at and a very good living it at. is and and you know the beauty of things and you know I, I I find very frustrating people will say tourism it's um, minimum wage flipping hamburgers mm -hmm. is the only jobs and and I say yes that is what we do have but we also have a lot of managerial jobs we have full-time family sustaining jobs and and again, we're providing employment, we meaning the tourism industry, is providing employment opportunities to our youth that a lot of communities don't have that. And when, you're, when, when the youth are working, um, I think that it, it, it keeps them out of trouble, mm -hmm. it provides them with money to acquire things that they'd like, and it lessens the burden on parents and families to have to provide those same things. Um, it, it, other communities don't have that. You know, we're also an opportunity for people re-entering the workforce. Um, to be able to enter at, uh, into a tourism job and then work their way up. And for many, many people, when you look at it, their first job 
was a tourism-related job. We, ha we are taking on the responsibility. Well, that was my second job. <laughs> but we're taking the responsibility on of offering and training people on, on, on working in jobs and what's expected of you when you're working um, is, is tourism's offering that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have an immigrant population that's relocating here. Tourism offers a lot of opportunities for them to come in. And when you look at tourism, even on a, on a nationwide basis, there is no other industry that offers the same kind of opportunities for someone to come in at the bottom mm -hmm. level and end up general manager of a place uh, in running a facility. There's not a lot of industries. Usually once you start, you're in a certain area, you can only rise to a certain level mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. In tourism, you can rise to the very top of being not only uh, running a facility, you can often end up owning that facility. So um, employment opportunities, I believe, um, fit very well uh, into uh, into helping this economy here. I know you're from uh, Niagara Falls, I believe. Yes. Yeah, New York State, and uh, one of the jobs I had, well, that's how I worked my way through college. I was a bellhop at the Lake Placid Club. Yeah, yes. And, you know, I mean, we're talking Lake Placid, New York is tourism. Uh, they had the Olympics there, of course, but right. they, they can appeal to them, that huge industry there, because of the way they can handle that tourism business. That's a huge, huge business for those people up there. Uh, and that's a destination that, people go to, to um, vacation uh, in the winter. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that's where they want to go. The skiing is outstanding, and uh, so I, I'm, I'm agreeing with a lot of what and, and much I'll, of everything I'll bet there was a, a pretty lucrative summer job being ah, in <laughs> You know me too well, don't you? There were some days you'd made a quarter, yeah. but there were other days I'd make a hundred dollars. And yeah. back in the 60s and so when I was doing a hundred dollars a day, that was like, whoa, yeah. you know, and that's how I paid for my education through that job. And I'm proud to say that I did that, you know. Right. I, I learned how to get along with people and I learned how to conduct myself. I was 500 miles away from home. Mom wasn't there to cook my meals. Dad wasn't there to give me an extra buck or something, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it worked out very well for me. You've touched on a lot of points today and I want to just come back to another point. There's a lot of common misconceptions people have about Erie and how does Visit Erie, or what does Visit Erie do to, com to combat that, in, I think, in a sense? Well, I, you know, the most important thing we find, particularly if we're going out and trying to attract conventions and meeting mm -hmm. business to come in, or um, companies to bring their bus groups in, is getting those decision makers to come to Erie. Uh, that is, it, it, you know, I... I, I make this comment all the time that you know I've, I've been now in Erie a little over nine years and in that time I've never had family friends relatives or business person who's come to Erie that has not left with an incredibly changed positive perception of this community we actually have a familiarization tour in town right now uh, today of meeting planners from Washington DC uh, and, and, and the other areas East Coast mm -hmm. that are in um, and I, I had lunch with them yesterday and, and one meeting planner said you know I I'm, I'm, was originally from Pittsburgh and you know used to go to Erie all the time and now I'm down in Washington and you know I've received your invitations to come here and thought why would I want to go to Erie and there's no way I'd want to bring my meeting here but the persistence of, of, of you asking and inviting me I've come in and she was just astounded she said I cannot believe all there is to see and do in this community mm -hmm. how clean this community is mm -hmm. how well landscaped you know it, it's great I love it you because are. people from outside come in here and they see us with a set of eyes that we don't have right and uh, you know and and we often because you live here I suppose and we see things mm. every single day we see the potholes we see the potholes yeah. but mm -hmm. I'll tell you it, meeting planner after meeting planner on this fam tour kept saying it's amazing what you're doing in this community mm -hmm. I never thought my group would come here but you know what they're going to so another question I had for you then is comparing Erie to um, cities of similar size, I'd like to say that we can be head and shoulders above them. First of all, we have the lake, mm -hmm. uh, which that's not too eh. shabby. 
I, have that at our doorstep. When, when I talk to my counterparts from uh -huh. around the country when yeah. I'm at conferences and out there and, and you know, in conversation, well, what do you have in Erie mm -hmm. to promote? And, and when I run through the list of all that we have to promote, mm -hmm. I, they're astounded. And many of them say, you know, I have one thing to promote. Oh, really? You know, I, I have one big thing or two big things, but I can't believe all that you have from fishing to culture to everything. So, you know, we hear that all the time. The lake is huge. Mm -hmm. um, I had a counterpart here from another part of Pennsylvania that uh, on Presque Isle said, don't take offense by this but it doesn't seem like I'm in Pennsylvania when I'm standing <laughs> here. And so she said, I mean that only being totally complimentary because there's no other place in the entire state of Pennsylvania that you can go and stand and look at a body of water right. and the beach that we have. I know, and people pay huge dollars for North Carolina's view. And our daughter, one of our daughters lives in Hilton Head, huge, 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 huge dollars. Or um, California, huge, 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 huge dollars, San Diego, Los Angeles, San Francisco, I mean, you know. Yeah. And we have it literally at our doorstep at a very nominal cost um, as far as I think real estate. And uh, the, the things to do, as you keep saying, just bang after bang after bang right. after bang after bang after bang. We've got a couple minutes left, uh, John, and uh, I want to remind people that the annual visitor's guide, you can pick this up many different places it's or online mm -hmm. at visiterie.com, real easy. And maybe there, there's more inside the online than there is, I think, in here. A absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you have an opportunity, you go online, you can, uh, you can uh, connect with us through Facebook, through mm -hmm. Twitter. So, you know, we can, you know, on Facebook, we'll make sure that you're aware of everything that's taking place and happening as, as we're constantly posting. I noticed uh, the page I just happened to turn to was on Presque Isle, and it uh, shows people kayaking um, somewhere, and outdoors, of course. And Th this has to happen because our our greatest regional asset is our youth. We, we need to promote and keep them here and educate them here and get them good jobs here. And they need to have something that they say, I like doing this. Mm -hmm. And we have it in abundance, I think. Uh, I think that's a great selling tool mm -hmm. for people to say, look at what's this. There's such a turn back to the environment, towards people making sure that they are stewards of the land. And we have this great facility on Presque Isle to say, go find this someplace else, but you can't. And, and I think and that it, to me is a drawing card. You know, we hear that all the time, uh -huh. our youth that have gone away mm -hmm. who want to come back then, who recognize once they've gone to other locations mm -hmm. how much we have in Erie, um, they, are ju they just need the opportunity mm -hmm. to be able to come back and relocate mm -hmm. here. And, and hopefully as, as tourism goes down the road, uh, we'll be able to provide more and more of those opportunities for them to, to come back home. Again, this is John Oliver, and John Oliver is with Visit Erie. And uh, John, we got about a minute left. Your best 30-second speech or so, what do you got? Well, it, it's, you know, again, we're, we encourage everybody to become spokespeople for, mm -hmm. uh, for Erie. Uh, all of the efforts that, that we do and, and, and our partners in hospitality and attracting visitors here, when they arrive here, it's, it's the local residents that they're interfacing with. It's up to our locals to speak highly of what we have because we do have a lot and be proud of it uh, because then that rubs off and um, we're going to see more visitors spending more money. I'll go kayaking with you, Seth. Absolutely. Okay. You too. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Phil Fatika. Once again, John Oliver with Visit Erie. Until next time, take care.